they, they don't even fall in the data that we gather because they're just so invisible. Um, and we need more aggressive services uh, to, to, to get the message out. These are, these are uh, our youth who don't have the water church, don't have the family network. These are kids that are literally out on the street. Uh, and among black LGBT, the largest group are your trans. Um, and so, uh, coupled with the violence that they uh, endure, uh, we need to really do something quite aggressively to, to protect and get that information out to that particular group. You know, um, we did an intergenerational LGBT dialogue among um, um, groups of color uh, at the Harry Tubman House. And it was interesting. It was a day where we sort of tried to open up conversation and means of dialogue. And I was curious to see what issues became a flashpoint. And I think HIV was a big flashpoint in terms of being able to talk um, across generations. And I think um, people had put up uh, chart papers of their uh, beliefs and assumptions about HIV. And um, the, the, um, the older people really um, sort of went out of their mind when they saw some of the assumptions and beliefs that the other people put down. And it became a really hard to facilitate piece of the conversation. And I was really surprised by uh, that being the one that, you know, were jumping out of their seats. So I think, I think it has lots of implications for uh, how we, uh, as non-youth, sort of provide programs for the youth. I think it also speaks for the need for peer-based approaches around HIV prevention. And uh, I think there's also, I think in that conversation, there was, a, there was sort of this scolding attitude by some folks uh, talking to the younger people. And I think part of it is about, um, you know, sort of making assumptions that people, young, young people today know that they must know it because I knew 20 years ago, which of course makes absolutely no sense if you think about it. But I think it was an operating assumption that got people sort of moving in and getting upset. And I think that sort of um, sets, shuts down intergenerational conversations, which is unfortunate because it makes these more visible around each other. And just one last thing to that. I think one of the many horrors of the last eight years has been the enormous growth of abstinence only sex education in schools fueled by heavy amounts of federal funding and heavily promoted by the federal government. Uh, and these education programs, and I the word education in quotes, put young people at very serious risk because they ignore the reality of the sexuality of young people, they ignore the reality of the sex lives of married people. And, uh, and except for perhaps Massachusetts, they uh, give a message to lesbian and gay young people that there's actually no place for them to end up. Because if absence to marriage is the only message you're taught and you can't get married, then this is a message that will probably not resonate very well with you uh, and creates a conundrum. And so by allowing these programs to 